I think one of the uh, misunderstandings in the body of Christ is that worship has to be real slow and it's attached to a tempo and you've got to be real slow and mystical with worship for it to be worship. But that's not what worship is. It's not attached to a, to a, uh, you know, a tempo. It's attached to a heart thing. Worship is acknowledging God for who He is. And this song, uh, you know, I wanted it to have a little bit of a rhythm, a little bit of a kick to it, but, uh, but still it's an atmosphere of worship. And it just, it talks about in the beauty of your holiness and the presence of your power, you know, 365 days a year, every second, every minute, and every hour. It's a relationship. Uh, I, I sat down and a uh, young man in our church, uh, Jimmy Cawthorn, sat down and I, we wrote this song together and it just says, I worship you. And I, I believe it'll bless you. I believe, it, you know, it's a song that doesn't fit the mold of worship. It's not going to be uh, something that you would hear, uh, you know, a huge gothic choir singing. But, but it's, it's, it's a now style worship. So when it comes down to it and you, you try to realize what you were created for, some people think they were created to be a preacher and created to be a singer and created this. No, you were created to worship God. And so your, your first responsibility to, to God is to be a worshiper. And that's what this song just says. It just simply says, every day of my life, every second I live, I worship you. Every 
second, minute, and hour From the rising of the sun Till the going down of the same The name of the Lord is to oh. be praised Come on! I worship hey, you, worship you. I worship But I worship you Let the children say Come on! The prayer. 
this song actually came out of uh, Martha Munizzi came to my house one afternoon and we had, she had an idea and uh, she just began to sing the idea and so we sat down at my piano at my home and we started playing it and uh, going through the idea and it just, it ended up with a, a late 70s flair and uh, we just really enjoyed it and, and uh, it just, it turned out really well to uh, capture that, that era and which is real hot right now and so we wanted to do it and, and it really fit what we needed out of the song. So it, it, it comes across kind of Bee Gees, uh, you know, uh, disco time, but, uh, but that's, that's what's happening right now. It's time to dance. The Bible said to give him praise in the sanctuary, to praise him on the timbre, praise him on the cymbals, praise him with a loud voice, but praise him in the dance. Come on, pick your feet up, everybody. All right, we're gonna dance in this place tonight. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, move like this, come on.
if we take y'all to some old school church? And... You know, the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says that the battle is not yours. The Lord said, it's mine. Just tell your neighbor, if it ain't yours, why you keep it? Hey, choir, do y'all want to go back to some old school church? Why don't you high five your neighbor right now and just say, give it to the Lord. Because the battle is not yours. song that I wrote, uh, which kind of I reached down and pulled out what had been deposited in me when I was about 16 years old. I used to drive every Friday night and visit a little Kojic church, Church of God in Christ, and I wrote this song out of that experience. I've always wanted to and never have, and I finally wrote a song out of that experience. It, it's a song that just kind of brings up what we call old school church, uh, Church of God in Christ, and that's Friday night camp meeting music that you're listening to right now. And so uh, it's, but it's based out of 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Jehoshaphat goes to battle against the enemies of God. And God says, look, they're not fighting against you, Jehoshaphat. They're fighting against me. So the battle is not yours. It belongs to me. It's coming from God's perspective. He's talking to you. And God's telling you, listen, you need to give me everything you're going through. And I'll make it turn around and work for your good. The battle is not yours. It belongs to me.
I Win is one of those songs that's kind of a shouting, dancing, uh, stomping your feet, Pentecostal get down, uh, preaching type song. And it was birthed right in the middle of the service. We just started singing and started uh, declaring, no matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that I win. That's, that's what the Word of God says. And so we just began to sing it as a church. And I just put in the little verses that you're going to hear on this song. But it, it's a powerful song, and it's, it's a great song to just get up, uh, just let the devil know that no matter what's coming in your life, you're going to win.
You know, this song is a song that, uh, you know, when I think about God, uh, I've grew up in the church, and I think about the fact that uh, we've always, you know, had to see God and, and, and experience God on man's revelation, and that's the way God made it, because when you come to church and you sit down and a preacher begins to minister to you and tells you the characteristics of God, that's how you derive your opinion about God. I was sitting in my house and I decided that I would sit there and begin to just worship the Lord. And as I did, I began to realize that, that even in our vocabulary, everything that we have, the Bible says that God's ways are like the heavens are to the earth. And as I was sitting there at my piano, I just began to write this song and say, God, how can I describe you? How can I explain who you are? And as I began to write this song, I just began to realize you just can't. You can't explain him. All he is is holy. If you ask me today to describe God in one word, I would say there's no, there's no way to describe him. It's just there's no word to use but holy. This is a song that I wrote that I never dreamed it would be as requested as it is, but it's one of the most requested songs that I, I get whenever I'm on the road or doing a concert. Uh, it's a song that was birthed out of an experience that I had uh, right before I was getting ready to take a trip to Dallas, Texas. And right before we boarded the airplane to, to go to Dallas, uh, we were informed that we were going to have to change planes uh, because our plane wasn't, wasn't ready. And so it kind of inconvenienced us and aggravated us a little bit, but we got on the plane and we went to Dallas. and. Uh, and we uh, did our business there and we came back home. On the way home, uh, we, or when we got back home rather, uh, I, it was told to us that uh, Payne Stewart uh, was flying to Dallas on an airplane and the plane somehow lost oxygen or whatever and crashed in uh, South Dakota, I think it was. And um, when I started researching and looking at it, my secretary started researching, it was the exact plane we were supposed to be on 
that day. And I sat down at my piano and I just began to, to write this song. And I just began to tell God that, uh, you know, there are times in my life whenever I didn't even realize He protected me from something. You know, and how many times has that happened? That you go through life and you praise God for what you can see, but then you don't even ever realize that there was stuff you might have walked through that you didn't walk through because of His grace and because of His mercy. You realize and you begin to appreciate all of the times when you, you didn't realize and didn't know that God had protected you from something. You, you, you just, it's, it's a different level of understanding about His power and about His mercy. And I grew up singing the song uh, Amazing Grace, but for the first time in my life, I think I really was impacted by His grace and by His mercy. And how many times do we stumble? How many times do we mess up on our own, but God doesn't cut us off? God doesn't just abandon us, but He sticks with us. And He loves us through our circumstance and through our situations and through our struggles. And so, you know, I wrote this song and just said, you know what? I don't even know where I would be if, if it had not been for grace. Where would I be? You won't. Glad you see through eyes of love a hopeless case an empty place if not for grace amazing grace how sweet the sound I once was lost but now I'm found A hopeless case An empty place If not for grace Say it with me A hopeless case An empty If not for I love to worship you I love to worship you Thank you. 
uh, this song was birthed in the same atmosphere that you're seeing it live right now in the video, and that is that there are just some songs that just come right out of your spirit in the midst of worship, and this is one of those songs. And we could go for 20 minutes right now with that congregation and with the choir and with the band as we just got caught up in the presence of the Lord, giving, giving Him the glory and just worshiping Him. You know, we, we try to become creative sometimes with songs and we try to become creative with little hooks and lines and, and little uh, licks and things like that, and that's great. But sometimes, you know, you just got the simplicity of worship is where it's at. And, uh, and this, this is one of those songs that I think, you know, John was talking about whenever he said the Father's looking for people to worship Him in spirit and in truth. There's no frills, there's no thrills, and that's all great, and we love all that. But th this was just a time and an atmosphere of true worship where you just focused on Him. It's simple, it's plain, but it's effective. And it was that night, and, 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 and it was just a beautiful atmosphere to worship God in, and that's just how this little course happened. This song was birthed out of the spirit of our music director, Martha Munizzi. She brought, us, brought me the concept. I was sitting at the piano, I'll never forget it, on the platform by myself in the auditorium, and she began to uh, sing this chorus. And, uh, and so we began to collaborate on it and write it together, and it really fit you know, the whole pattern of my life as a child because I can remember time and time and time again, no matter what we were going through in our family, uh, the name of Jesus was the rock that we leaned on. And now that I'm an adult with a family of my own and, and two children of my own, I, I still rely on that same principle that my father and my mother taught us when we were children to, to, to call on His name. And so, you know, in light of what we've been through in the last few weeks and months as a nation uh, with the terrorist attacks on our freedom, we, we understand that, that more than ever, when you don't know what to pray, you know, and you don't know what to say, you don't know how to respond. You know, there are questions we can't answer. There are things we don't know, you know, but we do know this, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And when you get to the point where you don't know what to pray, what to say, or where to turn, all you do is just say the name.
wish I could find a witness in here tonight. Can you say?